you're watching Gears. When it comes to the garage, everybody would love to have something like this sitting in it that they could wrench on and drive and have fun with. And hopefully, you've got a project like this. But whether you have a cool project or not, there are some things that everybody's got in their garage. Things like this. <laughs> yeah, old lawnmowers and weed eaters and chainsaws and ATVs, you know, tools, things that you work with. The problem is most people don't spend any time maintaining these tools that they work with, and that's why they're either breaking down or not running when you need them the most. So what do you do? Well, you end up rebuilding them or getting rid of them and buying something brand new. And that is crazy because this stuff will last a long time if you take care of it. So today we're going to walk through some tips and tricks that will help you keep your lawn and garden stuff up and running for a long time. Okay, the first thing we're going to take a look at is oil. And on a small engine, you really need to be changing it about every 25 hours, even more if you're in dusty conditions. Now, since most of us are going to completely forget to do that and maybe get around to it once a year, it's a perfect time to swap to a synthetic oil because at least it's going to last longer and lubricate better than a conventional oil until you get around to changing it. Now, most people realize that a two-cycle engine oils completely different than a four-cycle. It gets its lubrication from mixing gas and oil together. So it's pretty important that you know what the mixing ratio is on your tool. And it's usually written on there in a couple different places. For example, this saw, 40 to 1. But if you buy pre-mixed fuel, notice that is 50 to 1. Now, if you use that fuel in that saw, you're going to burn the saw up. And if you can't get pre-mixed in your ratio, your only choice is to pick up some two-cycle oil, mix it with some gasoline to the proper ratio, and you'll be good to go. Now, I know this is a little bit of a hassle, but this is one of the main reasons that most two-cycle engines are burned up. Somebody put in a bad fuel mix. The next issue is fuel. <laughs> this is where things start to really get nasty. Because most of us push our stuff into the garage with the full intention of using it next week. But then the weather changes and you don't need it. And all of a sudden, six months goes by and it's spring. And this is what you got. Dirty, nasty vehicle with flat tires and a gas tank full of old, nasty goo like this. <laughs> That's awful. Now, the best way to prevent that kind of mess is to completely drain the fuel system before you put the tool away for storage. And the best way to do this is to just run the thing out of gas the last time you use it. That way you can avoid doing this. But if you don't want to drain the tank, there is an alternative. You can put in a fuel system stabilizer like this Max Clean from Royal Purple. And once you put that in your tank, that'll stabilize your gas, keep it from going bad and gumming everything up. Also, it's a good idea to replace your fuel lines every spring because with today's ethanol fuel blends, these fuel hoses don't last very long. Now we are on to the spark plug and the electrical system. And most people have never had their spark plug out to even look at it or service it or replace it. And that's an issue because this is where most of your hard starting problems are going to come from. Fortunately, there is a better plug than what came originally in your engine. It's called the E3 Lawn and Garden Plug. They feature a special diamond-shaped electrode that gives you a nice hot spark right in the center, so you get a complete burn of the fuel. E3 got their start on small engines and have done extensive testing on all kinds of engines to develop the perfect, high-performance, low-maintenance plug for the guy that's just going to put one in and forget about it, making it the perfect lawn and garden plug. While you're replacing the plug, it's also a good time to check the plug wire and the coil connections. If they're bad or worn, replace them. Another thing worth addressing is the air filter. And due to the nature of what these things do, <laughs> it's always dirty. Now, if you have a foam filter like this, you just want to clean it as you would normally and replace it if it's starting to get brittle and fall apart on you. And if your paper element is bad, just replace it. Now, if you neglect to do this or if you try to run the engine without an air cleaner, you're going to tear it up pretty quickly. All right, the next thing that we're going to look at is the cooling system. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, cooling system? These are air-cooled. 
That's right, they are. That means air needs to flow over the engine to keep them cool. So, you need to make sure that the intake screen and the cooling fins are not full of clumps of grass or dirt or other stuff, because this will cause the engine to overheat. Also, don't run the engine without the shrouding, because that'll cause it to overheat too. All right, that takes care of most of your general maintenance. Now what about when you want to store something for a few months, like over the winter? Here's the steps. Drain or treat the fuel system. Change the oil. Squirt the engine down with degreaser to get all the goo and gunk and dirt and grass off. Pull out the spark plug, squirt in about an ounce of oil, and rotate the engine. Then replace the plug. This coats the cylinder walls with oil to prevent any kind of rust or corrosion. Finally, remove the battery if it has one, and loop the throttle linkage, the chain, or any other moving parts so they'll be ready to go when you are in the spring. Now, like I said before, if you just do some of these simple maintenance tricks, your small engine lawn and garden equipment will last you a long time. And instead of having to fix it all the time, you'll be able to spend your time and money working on stuff you really want to work on. You know, for a long time, when people were building a project, the idea was to stuff an automatic transmission into it. And that's fine. But today, people are rediscovering how much fun it is to drive a stick. The proper bandit launch is about 3,000 to 4,000 on the RPM. See there? See where we're sitting? Got your clutch down here, and you got your shifter, and you... So now the hot setup is to have a five or six speed in your project. The problem comes in putting it in the car because you can buy a transmission at a lot of different places. But if you can't put it in your project, basically all you've got is a fancy transmission to show off to your friends and a cool box to throw your junk in. Fortunately, there are companies like American Powertrain whose sole purpose is to help you put that transmission into your project. Take a look. Now, whether you're into Fords, Chevys, Dodges, doesn't matter. The first thing you know you're gonna need is a bell housing so you can mount the transmission to the engine. And while you're at it, having the choice between a street or performance clutch or a steel or aluminum flywheel would be really nice because every project has different needs and power levels. Now, once you've decided on a clutch, it doesn't matter if you want to stick with the traditional mechanical linkage or upgrade to hydraulic linkage, American Powertrain has got a system that will work for you. Now, how are you going to bolt all this stuff in? Well, if you've got a muscle car from the 60s to the present, they probably have a direct bolt-in cross member to stick a Tremec transmission into your project. If you've got something a little weirder, like a Jaguar or a Mercedes or an early street rod or hot rod, they have universal cross members that'll take care of that for you too. Okay, when you're swapping from an automatic to a stick, there's a lot of little parts that you're gonna need and it's nice to be able to find those all in the same place. But a couple things you've got to have is a set of pedals and a drive shaft. Now in the past, you had to dig these out of a junkyard. Well now, American Powertrain's got them brand new so you can just buy them. Also, they don't have just a one size fits all drive shaft. They'll actually build you something to the right length, also something that'll handle the power that you're gonna throw at it. All right, what about the transmissions? You know, some of these Tremex can get kind of big for these smaller cars. Well, they also specialize in streamlining and trimming down these transmissions so they actually fit the car better. That way you're not struggling with trying to fit a car around a transmission. And as far as versatility, both the TKO and the Magnum are tough. Matter of fact, the Magnum will handle up to 1,100 foot-pounds. Yeah. And since they both have multiple shifting locations, you can probably put one of these in pretty much anything. So if you want a modern five or six speed in your project, a trim makes a pretty obvious choice.
but only if you can put it in and make it work because there's a lot that has to happen between your engine and your rear end. And American Powertrain has got this area covered and you still get a cool box to play with. You know, we try to do a lot of different style projects on gears. Some are hardcore ground up builds that take a while. Others are simpler and don't take near as long. But they still require that you set the vehicle aside for a while while you tear it apart and modify it. And if that rig happens to be your daily driver, well, that can be a problem. So we get a lot of requests for projects that a guy can do in an hour or two that won't void his warranty and still have a real benefit to it. You know, something that a weekend wrench can do. And the best place to start on any car or truck is the exhaust system. Now this truck is typical of the newer vehicles you'll see out on the road today. It's got dual exhaust blowing out the back like a lot of cars and trucks do. So you would think that this thing would flow like crazy and sound great, right? <laughs> That's not necessarily the case because that muffler is so restrictive, it's choking everything down. So really all these dual tips are doing is just looking good. So what do you do? Well, when you look underneath, you can see that all you really need to do is replace this huge tuna boat muffler that's underneath here. And that is something that you can do in a simple weekend. All right, in the past, the idea of crawling under a car or truck and messing with an exhaust system was about as desirable as getting your teeth scraped because they were always rusty, they never came apart well, and you spent all day messing with them. Well, that has changed since most OEM mufflers are held in place with these removable clamps. Now it's just a matter of unbolting everything. First, lube everything up nice, and then loosen the bolt clamps. Next, slide the tailpipes out of the muffler. A pry bar or a rubber mallet will help you move them along if they try to hang up on you. Now, just pull the stock muffler out. Now, the question is, what are we gonna replace this with? Well, the answer comes from Heartthrob Exhaust with this high-performance muffler that has a single inlet and dual outlets, just like this stock muffler does. And it's designed to bolt right in place of this monstrosity and give you better sound and better performance and economy. Now, since this is a lot shorter than that, it also comes with an extension piece and all the hangers and hardware to put it in. The extension pipe goes on first, followed by the muffler. Then the clamps slide onto the muffler. And finally, the stock tailpipes fit into the new muffler and are bolted in place. And that's it. Just a little bit of time in the shop, and you've got a vehicle that runs a little better and sounds a little better. And just putting on a heartthrob muffler is a whole lot cheaper than putting on a full catback exhaust system. Especially when you don't need to. Now, obviously, having a floor lift is going to make this project go a lot quicker. But even if you don't have one, this is only going to take you a couple of hours. And that'll leave you enough time to plan your next weekend project. And now, Parts Bin, brought to you by Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms. You know, one good thing about working on a popular vehicle is that they're easy to get parts for. I mean, Mustangs, Camaros, Corvettes, you can probably get parts for those things at Walmart. But what if you're working on something a little different, like a military truck or a power wagon? Well, you might have a problem unless you know of a place called Vintage Power Wagons. Now, they specialize in restoration parts for the Dodge Power Wagon, like weather stripping and hardware, engine parts, body parts, you name it. And they even reproduce hard to find parts like these winch bumpers. And if they don't have what you need in a new part, they've got a huge inventory of used parts just waiting for you to put them back into service. 
So if you're doing a power wagon, whether it's original or something highly modified, you're going to need some parts. Vintage Power Wagons is the place to go. Everybody loves a Jeep. And when the JK Wrangler came out in 2007, people really went crazy. Because now you could get one with four doors. The problem was the V6 engine was a little lacking in the performance department. Fortunately, Air Raid has a way to help with that with their MXP cold air intake system for the 2007-2011 Jeep JK. Now, it starts with a high-flowing air filter that tucks inside of this sealed box. Now, of course, the box gets its air from the stock location, and then it completely seals up keeping any water or debris from getting to your air filter. Then, of course, the air flows into the engine. Now, I know this looks like a pretty simple setup, but when Air Raid put this on the dyno, they got 18 extra horsepower and 22 foot-pounds. And that's impressive for something that you put on in just a few minutes with some simple hand tools, making an Air Raid MXP a great weekend wrench project. You know, every gearhead has got some die-cast models sitting around their shop because it's a great way to own a bunch of cars without spending a fortune for the real thing. But there is a difference in die cast. Some are toys that you let your nephew play with. Others are actually works of art, like this stuff from the Acme Trading Company. Check it out. A little bit larger than the typical 125th car, these are 118th scale replicas of some of the most iconic and historic street and race cars to ever hit the pavement. And with moving features like doors, hoods, seats, and suspensions, these are some of the most detailed models on the planet. But if that's not enough for you, they also have their real art replicas, which are massive, large-scale models of some of the most iconic race cars of all time, like the SoCal Belly Tanker. Now, as you can see, not only is every detail captured in this model from nuts and bolts to wiring to you name it, it's also limited edition. So it comes with a signed numbered document stating it's one of 300 that will ever be made, making this an instant collectible and the perfect gift for that gearhead. So if you are into die cast and you want something that's a cut above the rest, Acme Trading Company is the place you need to go. Now, quick tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. You know, one problem that a lot of guys face when they're working in their garage is where do you put the battery charger when you're trying to charge a battery? I mean, you don't want to set it on the fender and you don't really have enough room up here and it gets all tangled up if you put it on the floor and you end up stepping on it or forgetting about it and driving over it. It can be a real hassle. Fortunately, a simple solution comes in the one thing that most people have laying around their house an old barbecue grill. What you want to do is remove the center grill part and then bolt a platform in the center using a board or a piece of plywood. Now what you've got is the perfect battery charging station with some area here in the center for a couple of batteries when those need to be charged. You have areas on the outside for battery chargers and tools. You even got hooks here to organize your cables to keep those from getting in the way. And when you need to take the charger to the vehicle, you just roll it over there and hook everything up. This is the best way to organize your battery charging system and get rid of that piece of junk grill that's been driving your neighbors crazy. <laughs> If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. 
Today's What Are You Working On comes from Chuck Paris from La Plata, Maryland, and his project is a 1977 Bronco that he bought in 1978 right out of college. And he says that he drove that thing for 30 years and beat the tar out of it until it was so rough he was just going to part it out. Here's what it looked like. But then his wife and kids said, uh-uh, you're going to restore it. Of course, Chuck was like, you know, that's going to be expensive. And his wife said, as long as the boys help, I don't care. And that started a four-year journey. Check it out. The body was completely torn apart, and all the rusty panels were replaced with new sheet metal, with Chuck taking the opportunity to teach his sons how to weld and fabricate parts. The suspension got five and a half inches of lift, with the guys fabbing up their own steering linkage, rock sliders, and roll cage. When it came to the engine, Chuck kept it old school with the carbureted 302, but backed it up with a more modern five-speed and an Atlas II transfer case. But wait, wait, that's not it. Check this out. They also did all the paint work, and they did the final assembly right there in their garage. And now Chuck says he finally has the truck that he wanted for 30 years. There's only one problem. He's got to fight his sons to drive it. <laughs> Chuck, it's such a cool project. We're about to give you more of a problem because we are going to give you a Woodward Fab bead roller. So the next time you need to fabricate some panels, that's going to come in handy for you. But you will have to arm wrestle those sons to use that. Also, we're going to give you a year subscription to Four Wheeler Magazine so you can get some more ideas for your next project. Now, the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, you've got to send your project in to What Are You Working On? We'll do our best to get it on the air. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Facebook. We've always got cool stuff going on there. All right, it's time for you to get out and work on something. We'll see you next time.